promoter Eddie Hearn has claimed that, that Benjalom's boxer uh, has pulled Fraser Clark out of the purse bids yesterday for his ordered British heavyweight title fight against Fabio Wardley. So what is going on here? Eddie hasn't messed around. He's gone on Twitter and he said, heard from the British Boxing Board of, Con- of uh, Control that Boxer has pulled Big Fraser Clark out of the Wardley purse bid today. What a complete joke and a waste of our time robbing the fighters of opportunity and the fans of a brilliant fight. It's a shambles. Wardley responded, I can't believe it. Spencer, what do we know? Ben uh, Ben uh, Shalom is somebody who's a regular in this yep. in this studio. What do what do either of you know, Simon? Uh, I'm not hugely impressed by it because Ben's often on the case of looking at scenarios where solutions need to be found, and if there's a fight there to be made, then it should be made, um, mm-hmm. and we shouldn't be at a stage where one promoter gets a tee off on another. Whether that was Ben against Eddie or Eddie against Ben in this instance, Eddie against Ben. If this fight was good enough to be made and good enough to have the discussion about a purse bid, I don't think it's particularly impressive from Ben. I think the Boxing Board of Control ordered this fight firstly. Um, and, you know, Fraser Clark's only had six fights. So I think, well, that's, that's sort of fast-tracking him. I know he's got an extensive amateur career, etc. The Boxing Board ordered the fight, but I think from Fraser Clark's point of view and Ben Shalom's point of view and with the investment they've gotten from the business side of things, yeah. they wanted Fraser Clark to have a, a, a warm-up fight before going into that fight. They, they want the Fabio Wardley fight, that is for sure. But because we've gone to purse bids, I think had Eddie Hearn won the purse bids, that Eddie could have ordered that fight within three weeks, which would have stopped Fraser Clark from having this fight. And from Ben, ben Shalom's point of view, he's looking again. Fraser's only ever been six rounds. And I know speaking as an ex-fighter, doesn't matter how good you are. When you get into round nine, 10, 11, it's not about your your talent and how good you are. Yeah. It's more about your grit, your determination, being there before, having that experience. It's about the development stage. So I understand Ben's point of view saying, well, let him have the warm-up fight first. But And I think they made the purse offer. They made an offer before purse, before the bids. And they didn't accept yeah, that. Yeah, but I'm telling you, beats. nobody else understands it. Uh, Spencer, I'm looking at the messages coming in here. Rob, I'm not Eddie Hearn's biggest fan, but if this was him pulling out for purse bid after talking up the fight, then he would get unreal stick from us, the fans. There is Josh. Anyone going to mention the shambles of a purse bid situation yesterday? Mm. Ben Shalom should be ashamed of himself. Seems he's blown his and Sky Sports pot of money on the likes of Boatsy and Okoli. I mean, this is not good enough. Now, a lot of fight fans, this is gathering pace. And let me tell you, as you and I, Spencer and Simon, are talking about this, and this is the beauty of live radio here in Talk Sport, Fabio Wardley has just called in to join us. Fabio, good afternoon. Good afternoon, fellas. How are we doing? How are we doing? We're very good, thank you, Fabio. So what do you want to say? You, You responded to Eddie's tweet yesterday, I cannot believe it. You're of, you're obviously absolutely sickened by the fact that you're not going to get the opportunity to fight Clark, right? Oh, there's so many words for it: sickened, devastated, disappointed, upset, and angry. Like this, it was it was due to be one of the biggest British title fights, heavyweight British title fights since like AJ Dylan White, maybe Joyce Dubois. It was set to be massive, and then for some reason, they, their side, Ben Shalom, boxer, whatever pulls the rug from under our feet and takes it away from us. But not just me, Fraser as well. Yeah, I think Fraser wants that, wants that fight, but I think from Boxer's point of view, they wanted him to have that warm-up fight first to get those rounds under his belt before going into a fight of this magnitude, which you can understand because he's only had six fights. They've got imbe- big investment in him. So I think that's where the problem was, um, Fabio, that Boxer wanted him to box first. And had it gone to purse bids, that, that probably wouldn't have, wouldn't have happened. And he'd have had to go straight into a fight with you, which, you know, given the circumstances with your inexperience as a professional, that's where the problem lies. Yeah, but also, how many rounds have I gone? The mm. most I've gone is five or six. Mm. So I've, I've not done 10, 12 rounds. I've had them booked, don't get me wrong. But I've not done them. I've not done the distance either. But I've I think got it's no more he... rounds than he has. I think it's only because he uh, tra- he's only trained for a six rounder. He's not trained for a twelve rounder, as you know. Training is different. If you're training for a four rounder, six rounder, eight rounder, ten rounder, you do it's different training schedules, and you do more yeah, rounds, etc. Fabio, you and I, Fabio, stay right where you are and stay in the line. You and I can cop out of it for a second. But James seems to have nailed it here. This is Spencer sticking up for boxer and been biased here. Call it for yeah. what it is. <laughs> I think and where's so. Simon's I- voice gone about his mate? 
uh, Ben Shalom. I'm not sticking yeah. up a boxer, by the way. I'm just explaining what it is from a po- boxer's point of view. He's only done six rounds, right? Fraser and bo- yeah, boxer. I've got an investment in him. But Fraser's only done six rounds. He's only been training for a six round. Like, yeah, but the, the suggestion yeah. here is, if this was Eddie Hearn who'd done this, you you would both be hammering well, Eddie well, Hearn. Hold on, no, hold yeah, on. Definitely, I, definitely. I, hold on. I've just said from the outset that this is not a good look. By the very same nature that if Eddie Hearn had done this, I'd have something to say. I've just said it about Ben that I don't think it's a good look. Um, but I do think there is a commercial logic behind it, which nobody wants to hear. Ben came in the other day and talked about the nature of boxing being a business and a sport. Fabio will know that. But this is a matter of timing. So this is not a matter of, is this fight going to happen or not going to happen? I would wage you this fight's going to happen, but it may not be just in the same order that Fabio might like. Yeah, but and, Fabio, and, that's not good enough for you, is it? No, no, no. I understand their points and their fair points. That, that this is a business and maybe Absolutely. time frame is, is a factor. But my ultimate point is 258 lobbied for this themselves. They went to the board directly and asked for this in advance and they said we want the, Fra- the Fabio Wardley fight the board gave them that even though I'd only had my belt two or three months or so the board gave them what they asked for it came too prematurely than what they really thought they was necessary for them and then they backed out mm. so don't ask for something and then get it and then drop out of it no, that's, that's a fair, that's observation. Yeah, a fair it's a fair observation what I don't want you to do <clears throat> and what I don't want the fighters to do <clears throat> is get in the middle of promoters scoring points off one another because that's what they're doing mm-hmm. Ben Shalom has a swipe at Eddie Hearn. Eddie Hearn has a swipe at Ben Shalom. And at the end of it, you guys need to make a living, need to boost your careers and get outcomes. So whilst I take your point, and I do think that if they've asked for this opportunity, then they've opened the door. And if what you've told me is the chronological order of events, you're absolutely spot on. Too bad. Be careful what you wish for. Yeah, I mean, Fabio, is, would it be fair to say that this fight is still definitely going to happen, but you're just looking at pushing it back to maybe sort of July time? Well, it depends now because I'm, I'm, it's, it's a funny one because I'm the champion, but I'm left in limbo because now I have to wait and see what the board does in terms of whether they mandate someone else, whether mm. they give me a voluntary or whether they maybe just leave me alone for a bit and let me carry on in a different direction or what I want to do. So I'm kind of stuck in a situation where I'm having to sit and wait, whereas everyone else gets to carry on and do what they want to do and plan their fights and, and move their careers along. And somehow the champion has to sit still and wait for everyone else. It'll be interesting to see what Fraser's reaction is, because ultimately, as you say, you're the champion. Fraser is the one that's being afforded the opportunity, has asked for the opportunity. Just the timing isn't right. And with due respect, if you're the champion, the timing should be more right for you than it should be for him, because you've earned that position. Yeah. Yeah. It'll be interesting Definitely. to see what Fraser has yeah. to say about mm-hmm. it. Yeah, but Spencer, <clears throat> as the next fighter yourself, yeah. your sympathy surely has to lie with Fabio here. Oh, absolutely, of course. You know, because he's the one that's left without the fight. I totally understand that. It's the, it's the politics that go on behind that. But I totally understand from Fabio Fabio's point of view, of course, if he's been, you know, if the fight was going to pass bids, you know, he just wants to fight. And that's it. Yeah. Fraser Clark just wants to fight. You know, it's all it's all the stuff that goes on behind the scenes of why the fights yeah. come, are uh, on and not you, on. Have you heard totally anything? Totally understand Fabio's Fabio, point Fabio, before of view. joining us, I'm delighted that you have. So thanks for doing that. Have you heard anything further to this today? No, uh, no, nothing more today. Not, not heard anything, not heard anything else today. So... I'm just going to sit, like, be patient. I'm sat in the gym as it is now, so I thought I'd jump on quickly and just have my peace and have my say. And I'm, I'm carrying on. I'm training as usual and getting ready for whatever comes my way next. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Very good, Fabio. Thank you for taking the opportunity to call in, mate. We appreciate it. That was Fabio Wardley. They're all out there listening, Spencer. Yeah. That mm-hmm. is for sure. Um, uh, fight fans and fighters. And this is what can happen. What we've just seen is, is the perfect example of why a fighter can end up frustrated and why fight fans can end up frustrated. Listen, historically, this has happened, Jim. You know, the fighters just want to fight. I understand that. I get that. Do you know what I mean? Like, But from Fraser Clark's point of view, he wants to fight. He wanted the warm-up fight as well before. But he probably would have jumped in from the promotional side. They're saying, yeah. no, we want him to pick up that experience. We need him to get the rounds before going into that fight. I understand all sides of it. You know, it's just very, very, you know, it's just very difficult I just think that they're worried about if it had gone to purse bids and Matchroom Eddie Holm would have won the purse bids, the fight would have been ordered before he could have had a warm-up fight and that's where the problem yeah. lies. They didn't, you know, as an investment, as a company, they didn't want to take that risk where they say, well, we still want to fight, but it's timings, as you said, Simon. Well, this is the problem with it, you see. I've got to go in now and I've got to garrote 
um, Ben Shalom, right? Because if I don't, yes. because I dared pick Eddie Hearn up about one of his fighters failing a drug test and wanting to go after that and to make sure the promoters are accountable, I now must deploy the same standards to Ben Shalom because he's my favourite, according to the logic on Twitter. The bottom line is, it's not a great look. The business side of things, we've just seen it in the studio, the living embodiment. Josh Bawatsi left yeah. Match Room because he thought the bigger best business opportunity mm -hmm. was to go to boxer and the argument was that he could have fought Dimitri Bivol but he didn't want to sign three more fights with Matchroom to mm -hmm. do so so you can put the yin in the yang I don't like this look I think if they've called this fight on ultimately wanting it yeah. and 258 management have been in this and everyone's throwing their hat in for purse bids right then the bottom line is they should deliver the outcome timings and, and, have messed yeah. everything up absolutely and there and then that is why I never decided to be a, a prize fighter myself <laughs> because the disappointment you prize can face in the, in the long run is, is just it? is just so painful. Jim White and Simon Jordan. Monday to Friday mornings from 10 on AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.